All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We got about 20 minutes here, so we're going to give you a lot of information in that time, right? And the idea is to keep it very interactive, right? So, so please ask us any, any questions as we go, go through what we are showing you over, over here. All right. Can everyone hear me OK? It's windy today, so I'm generally very loud. But yeah, today might not be the ideal day. We'll, we'll see. All right. So again, I think most of you know me, Manny Singh. I'm a cropping systems agronomist at Michigan State. We do work across crops, you know, basic agronomic challenges, working on corn, soybean, and wheat. Uh, we, we have been doing a lot of wheat work with support from you guys, you know, Michigan Wheat Program. So we appreciate all the, all the money that you guys provide to check off, and it comes back to us to do some work, right? So the study we are talking today, it's behind us. Uh, it's led by our graduate student, Patrick Copland here. He's from Ohio. He didn't go to Ohio State. So don't, don't, don't keep any grudge against him, right? So, and uh, we have Paulo here, Paulo Arias. He's an uh, intern uh, in our program. He's originally from Colombia, right? But he's been in the United States for, for a few years now. So he's helping us with, with some of our work. So talking about, again, the, the study, you guys have this handout uh, in, in, in your uh, package today. So if you don't mind pulling that out, I think that'll help you as we go through some of the information today. Pre-COVID, I think you guys have probably been to some of our fields. We have done this over, over the Zoom the last two years. We have been looking into this idea about, you know, how to improve seed placement or how to do a good job placing seed at the time of planting, right? because we are setting the yield potential at the time of planting, right? So the goal is how we can do a really good job setting up a high yield potential that we can protect during the, the growing season, right? And this first figure you can see on, uh, on our handout shows you the importance of optimal planting time more than anything else. We have done this study over two years now, and you can see like in November, I mean, we are losing plenty of yield. And the trend varies based on the sort of weather we are getting in November, December, and early spring. The loss in potential later in the season kind of depends on that. But you can see in here, this sort of a break point right around mid of October, right? That uh, we are still maintaining upwards of 80% of our yield potential, 80 to 85%. So the ideal for us in terms of maintaining that high potential is to be able to get our seed in ground by mid-October or so, right? So what we can do to achieve that? I think a lot of you probably had issues uh, getting your uh, seed in ground. How many of you weren't able to like plant all the acres you wanted to, to last year? Raise of hands. I, I see quite a few, right? So we, I think we were down more than 20% acreage-wise this year compared to the, the year before. And that was because of the relatively wet weather we had, right? So again, we are asking these questions, you know, what are the best planting methods that not only get us high yield potential, but also help us plant our crop faster, right? So we are not at the mercy of weather as much as we are otherwise, right? So again, some of our previous work, and you will see some of the equipment parked back there, we were looking into using more precision-based equipment, just like what we do in corn and soybean and see if we benefit by that optimal placement of the seed. Better singulation, better even seed spacing. And we were able to even go to narrow row space. Uh, we were able to go to five inches and even cut down our seeding rate so we have more spacing between the, the seeds. And Patrick will show you a cartoon on that later. We, we did see about 10% or so yield benefit by going to a precision planter and then going to a narrow row spacing, okay? Combination of those two. But we have been hearing reports about these other technologies, you know. One specific one is the broadcast incorporation. And Patrick will talk more about that. What it does is it helps you plant at a faster rate. But we, we don't have any real good data on how that's going to turn out, right? There are potential cons with, with that technology. So again, that's sort of the idea behind this project is to compare these different planting technologies and see how we can maintain high yield potential by planting early in the, in the season, along with, again, doing a better job, hopefully, with the seed placement. That gives us a high yield, as well as minimize our input cost and even probably improve the quality. And we have some data on, on that, that that Patrick hopefully can, can talk about. All right. 
Over to you, Patrick. And if there are any questions, uh, Patrick will be more than happy to answer that, right? Yep. So I, I don't have to do that. <laughs> All right. All right. So Manny kind of went over why we're doing this study and what the potential benefits are, or at least some of them, of precision planting or, or broadcast incorporation as compared against a drill. Can anyone think of some other possible advantages or disadvantages of each of these methods? Yep. Anything else? Is it with wheat though? We know it is with corn, it's probably with soybeans too, but is it with wheat? <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's one of the things we're looking at where there's concern with broadcasting corporation that you have a lot more variability in depth and so that could be a problem. Um, you also obviously have a random distribution of seeds so you're going the opposite direction than with the precision planting where you're trying to get uniformity. That's out the window with Broadcasting Corporation. Um, <coughs> so those are some things we're possibly looking at. But on the other hand, if you look at this other board that Paulo has here, okay, so with a seed drill on seven and a half inch spacing, we have um, seeds kind of randomly distributed in the row. With precision planting at the same rate, they're, the row uh, on five inch spacing, because that's what we're doing here, the rows are closer together and the seeds in the, within the row are a little bit farther apart. And <coughs> um, they're more uniformly spaced as well. Kind of the ideal that you would want with pretty much any crop is this uniform distribution where they every seed has the same distance around it between other seeds on all sides that is illustrated here. The precision planter gets a little bit closer to that because you have the narrower rows and the larger spacing between the seeds. But then with broadcast incorporation, at least in theory, because it's a random distribution, you can get even closer to that. So that's a, a one potential benefit of moving to Broadcasting Corporation. Also, as Manny, I think, alluded to, you also have the benefit of being able to plant faster, plant more acres more quickly, which will allow you to get wheat in the ground, more wheat in the ground in the fall with the narrow planting windows that we have around here. Um, <clears throat> so this cartoon here on your handout shows the seeding depth variability. These are actual measurements actually taken from this field here for Broadcasting Corporation, Grain Drill, and Precision Planter. As you can see, the as we would expect, Precision Planter is pretty much uh, uniform, uh, consistent seeding play, uh, depth. Drill is more random and Broadcasting Corporation is even more random. Um, what we're seeing though in terms of yield is that Broadcasting Corporation is actually about the same as drill in terms of yield. We were also looking at the possibility that maybe because of the non-uniformity in seeding depth, you might need to increase your seeding rate with Broadcasting Corporation in order to make up for seeds that are planted too shallow or too deep. And we didn't really see a benefit of doing that, at least from last year's data. Um, <coughs> so we're thinking that that yield um, being the same as the broad, as the drill might be due to the higher number of tillers in Broadcasting Corporation compared to drill. Um, that is also shown on the handout. Um, let's see, and then in, in terms of comparing with Precision Planter, we are seeing about an 8 to 11 percent yield benefit of Precision Planting on narrow, narrow, narrow rows compared with the drill, which is consistent with what we were seeing in our small plot studies. So is there anything I missed? Well, again, that's pretty much, uh, so the research I was talking about precision planting before, we were doing that in small plots on campus here, you know, 
real small plots, right? So we, again, the idea behind this project is take it to the farm scale, right? And again, over here, we have relatively long strips, but not at a farm scale, right? So some of you have worked with us where we have these 1,000, 2,000 feet, you know, length of the field strip, and we are still seeing that benefit. In small plots, we saw about the 10% yield improvement. With the precision planter, again, better seed placement and probably narrow rows are playing a bigger role there. But we are seeing that again at, at the farm scale, at least last year, right? I think yeah. we had one, two, three. So we had the first farm, one, two, and three, you can say, had that precision planter. And two out of those three, we did see a yield benefit. So that's the precision planter. And again, we believe it's coming from that uh, optimizing seeding depth. You're able to get uniform tilling, right? We have also seen in the previous research is it probably can help with the improvement in uh, the fungicide efficacy against uh, uh, head scab. We saw a reduction in dawn level, it's at least in one site year. So again, not enough data, but we did see a benefit in terms of uh, improvement in quality as well, going to precision planting route, right? But again, here we are going to the opposite side, right? Broadcasting and incorporating our seed. And again, as Patrick mentioned, look at all the five farms. And look at you can the variability in yield potential sorry down here we went all the way i think some farms were uh, upwards of 150 bushels and some are way down to even 60 or 70 bushels and you can see again these are kind of lined up by planting date yes. earliest on the left and latest on the right so you can right right off the bat you can see a planting date impact going on here as well right but across all those yield potentials you can see the drill and the broadcast incorporation you could not separate them out and again that we believe is because of this tillering uh, that cartoon that uh, follows holding that more random distribution of seed getting away from the clumpiness pattern we have by staying in in rows and that's possibly uh, negating any negatives that are probably coming from this this is going to be the, the biggest issue right optimizing seeding depth uh, i think you alluded to that as well right this is our worry, so again, this is one one year data. Five locations, three of these farms, I believe farm one, two, and three, they all were in, in this area, in the, in, the, in, the, in the thumb region. But again, we want to get more data. So we have trials in ground this year, we'll report those results, and we also plan to uh, do these trials again next year. And here's my pitch, you know, as always, if anyone yes. is interested to host these trials on your farm, let us know. We are looking for more people who are willing to try these technologies at your own farm. Time for some questions. So your seeding rates are the same across all applications? Yes, the seeding rates are the same except for where we we had them all at the same rate. It, the rates varied from farm to farm. But then for Broadcasting Corporation, we also had a rate where we increased it by 30 or 35 percent. And then I think uh, at this location we actually had three different seeding rates for broadcasting corporation where we increased it by that 30 to 35 and then increased it again so everything here was 1.2 million acre uh, seeds per acre uh, you can see again the plots the precision yep. planter is on the far side you can see a lack of even rows I and mean, you can't even see those rows at five inches well same again you can kind of see where, where the rows are right and the broadcast plots are all over here going from the lowest 1.2 all the way to 1.6 and then a 2.0 so we are really bumping it up and seeing are we going to see any advantage right but these rates again they're not consistent across farms they are as patrick mentioned they're dependent on what the farmer feels comfortable plus what the planting date is right as we get delayed we try to bump our seeding rate as you all probably do right what else I have not, I don't know, have you ever done so, that? Yeah, so we have not, but I have seen again in the previous study where we had some residue issues, where the seedbed wasn't really smooth, that's where we were seeing a higher benefit of the precision planter compared to, to the drill. Because again, it can help optimize your seeding depth, right? So we, we did see that a higher benefit came from when we planted in a non-ideal seedbed, plus when the planting was delayed actually. And that's one thing we haven't tried with the broadcast. Uh, last year, all of these were again, as you can see, 
relatively optimal planting time. So this year, I think it's somewhere down here, we have planted a study on campus where we planted under really late planting conditions. Early November, I think. Early November even, and see, see what happens. All right. Somewhere over there. We have not. For uh, seeding? For seeding? We have, we have not done that. Yeah. We have not. Again, the worry is again that it's <coughs> going to come back to this piece, right? Again, are you able to optimize? Are you able to get some sort of uh, incorporation with, with that? So I, I really haven't looked into, into that. Has anyone, has anyone experienced with the with aerial dropping, leaf seed? like how did it turn out? Not good. Some, okay. Sometimes good, sometimes yeah, okay. it goes under. So how are you broadcasting uh, uh, the, the seed? So it, uh, it varied from farm to farm depending on what equipment was available. Usually there will be some sort of machine that will broadcast it as a gandy box usually and then just broadcast it over the surface and then either in the same pass or a separate pass you go over it with a shallow tillage implement. Down here we have, I'm not sure, it's a joker. We ha it has a seeder on it, broadcasts the seed just before the last set of um, tillage tools goes over it. If you got some more than welcome, I think we have five more minutes of us to all. So we can probably move over. You can look at the plots here if you want to, and we can go look at the at some of the equipment and you can see the tool we were using over here at least to broadcast and incorporate and it can be a one pass right you don't have to do a two pass system you are broadcasting the seed and incorporating it in one pass 